What's cooking everyone? It is officially November, which means Thanksgiving is just around the corner. Every year, my family has a tradition where they come over to Balbe's house for the most amazing Thanksgiving feast. All these recipes are gonna spice up holidays at your house tenfold. So if you wanna be the one in your family that makes the best holiday food, you gotta watch this video and you gotta subscribe, like, leave a comment. Please, 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 please. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, ball base, mashed potatoes first. I'm using a mix of both Yukon Gold and Russet Potatoes. Peel them, you can check out my pro peeling skills right here. And we're gonna cut these into fairly small cube sized pieces. If you only have one type of potato, Yukon Gold is probably the way to go. Nicely chopped and put those aside. We're gonna bring out a whole head of garlic. This is the cheat code to making the best mashed potatoes. Cut off a big chunk from the top for easy access when we need to use it. And we're just gonna plop that in an oven at around 350 degrees for 30 to 45 minutes. And while that's cooking, we're gonna boil some water and add some pretty large pinches of salt. I think I used like two full handfuls here. Trust me, this is gonna make a big difference in the end result, so don't skimp out on that. And just boil the potatoes for 15 to 20 minutes or until they're very, very tender. As you can see here, I'm just using a chopstick for testing. Easy poke through and they are ready to go. Strain them out in your colander of choice. Get all that water out, and we're ready to do some mashing. I have an actual potato ricer here, which is pretty important for this recipe as it really gives that perfect potato consistency. But if you only have a regular masher, you can do it the old fashioned way and just mash, mash, mash. Plop a handful inside the ricer and just smush those potatoes down, just like old school Play-Doh. Try not to overstuff it, it's not gonna save any time, it's just gonna make it harder to press. And now we're gonna take out that gorgeous head of garlic, which is fresh out of the oven, and as you can see, it just gives these garlic the most amazing roasted color and flavor. Plop each clove out of its skin, and this is gonna be very easy after you roast it. Look at those beautiful babies. We're gonna put those back in the potato ricer, and here we're gonna just have the most amazing roasted garlic minced mixed inside our mashed potatoes. Leave that aside and it's back to the stove where we're gonna melt some butter, mix with some whole milk and a lot of heavy cream because we really want that creamy, thick, rich, delicious mashed potato. Don't forget to add any herbs of choice that you want. Here I'm using some rosemary and bay leaf. Give that a nice stir, cooking on a medium high heat until it starts to boil, just like this, and it's ready for the potatoes. I'm using a strainer here because of the herbs that I have inside that I don't want to be inside the final product. Give that all a good hefty mixing because you just want all of these ingredients to be well combined. If your potatoes are looking a little too chunky, it's probably because you did not boil them long enough. Just use a masher and mash them to your liking. This looks smooth, creamy, and delicious, transferred to a serving dish. Now that is some desirable mashed potato. And you can always top it off with some black pepper and green onions or chives, whatever you have. Hopefully your garnishing skills are better than mine. Easy peasy, let's move on. Time for the iconic mac and cheese, let's go. We're gonna start this really quickly with some boiled water, oil, and salt. Throw in the pasta, and I'm using shells, which is the obvious dominant choice because of their shape. It really helps hold the cheese inside the little pockets, and it just makes for an amazing bite. We're gonna let these boil for seven to 10 minutes and always make sure that you do a taste test to make sure that it's cooked to the right tenderness. You really don't wanna overcook your pasta because then it just becomes a big mushy mess. Strain that pasta out and always remember that it's going to have residual heat and cook a little bit more during this waiting process. So just, just make sure you don't overcook it, okay? Back to the stove for the sauce. We're gonna start with some equal parts butter and flour. And we're just gonna make a really quick roux here, which is really going to help the consistency and body of the mac and cheese, keeping everything nice and thick. Never stop stirring when you're making a roux. When the roux transforms into a very light brown color, it's time to add in our creams. Be sure you're pouring and stirring at the same time. Stir, stir, stir it up. After a couple minutes, you'll see the roux in full effect with a very thick consistency forming. And at this point, it's time to add in the flavor. We're just going with a very simple salt, pepper, garlic powder mix as well as some white cheddar and parmesan for our cheeses of choice. At the point where you're adding all the spices and cheese, you can turn the heat down to a very low or just take it off the stove. Mix it, give it a taste test, and wow. 
Pasta goes straight into the sauce, and yeah, this pan is a little too small, so please excuse the mac overflow. And now, one final combination of our ingredients, and <laughs> wow, just look how amazing, cheesy, beautiful this is. And at this point, you can stop if you just want some average mac and cheese, but we're gonna take it one step further. Pour that stunning mac and cheese into a baking tray. Oh, so gooey and amazing. Spread it out, we want that even distribution of mac and cheese all around. Now it's time to top that baby off with some breadcrumbs. A good heaping amount of it just to get an even layer across the whole surface. One last step, a fresh slice of parmesan cheese and we're just gonna grate this over the whole thing and this is just going to complete the perfect mac and cheese crust. You can be as generous as you want here, this is the time to binge. If you think she's attracted now, she's about to get even more lovely. We're gonna broil this in the oven for about 15 minutes and here we go. Wow. Just take some time to appreciate the beauty of this lady. By just broiling this, you don't overcook the cheese and still get an amazing creamy interior with the perfect crispy crust. Mouth-watering stuff right here. You're going to love this, I assure you. Mac and cheese done, let's move on. Possibly the tastiest healthy side dish, Brussels sprouts. Wipe the mushrooms down a little bit with a paper towel, that's really all you need. Mushrooms are the ideal complement to Brussels sprouts just due to their difference in texture and taste. And we're just gonna cut these in halves or quarters depending on how big your mushrooms are. We just wanna make sure that each piece is as equal as possible. Onto our Brussels sprouts which are freshly washed and we're just gonna cut off a little bit of the stem here and half them. You can see how even the mushrooms and Brussels sprouts are here. You really wanna get in a habit of cutting everything equally while you're cooking. The final cutting job is just to mince some garlic. Slap it. Smash it. Cut it. Mince it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is gonna make for some tasty, tasty Brussels sprouts. When I'm cooking, I always wanna make sure my ingredients are organized together by stacking them and just being able to keep track of what is done and what still needs to be done. And these are just simple things that you need to pick up on in order to improve time management while you're cooking, especially if you're making lots of things at one time. Let's finish them off. Flat pan, high heat, add in a generous amount of olive oil and throw in our mushrooms. The cast iron is wonderful for this job, I just don't happen to have one right now. And we're just gonna saute these fun guys for a couple of minutes to ensure that the water moisture is out and give a nice char on each mushroom. Really pay attention to the color and when you get to this point, you can take them back out. Wipe the pan and back in with some clean olive oil. We're gonna do the same exact things with the Brussels sprouts, but this time we're gonna saute them on a medium heat before a longer period of time, just to ensure that they're cooked well through and through. And we're also looking for that beautiful char on each side. Taste test it real quick to make sure that it's not overcooked. That's amazing. Back in with the mushrooms. Quickly mix them and then make a pocket in the middle. We're gonna drop in just a little small chunk of butter, you know, cause this is a healthy dish, right? Stir it around, melt it, and then add in our garlic and just let that butter and garlic infuse in the middle for a minute or two just to bring out all that fragrance and then you can mix everything back together. This aroma is alluring. Time to finalize that flavor, we're just gonna add a few pinches of both salt and black pepper, as well as a good splash of balsamic vinegar just to add that perfect acidity to the whole thing. Quickly combine the whole thing, you don't wanna overcook it, admire it for a real quick second, and it's ready to plate. You can always add some bacon or pomegranate for color or just leave it as is. And that is just one desirable Brussels sprout ready to be devoured. Simple Thanksgiving sides finished. Ball Bay Thanksgiving sides are finally done and I concised it into this really beautiful little platter just for me. So, let's give it a try, shall we? Smooth, creamy, potatoey, buttery. I mean, this is just the staple of what mashed potatoes are supposed to taste like. In addition to that whole head of roasted garlic, I mean, that is just 
That is just icing on the cake, seriously. You gotta start adding a whole head of garlic in your mashed potatoes, roasted, okay? Don't forget, 12 out of 10. Mmm. That's my favorite, yep. Cheesy, tender, gooey heaven with a little bit of crispiness on top. This is some phenomenal mac and cheese right here. Putting the mac in immaculate, if you know what I mean. I just love the aesthetic of white cheddar. I always go for it. I think it looks the best. I think it tastes the best. And that's just me. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are very, very obsessed with like that really cheesy yellow style of mac and cheese. Like the ones you see in all the commercials. But you know what? Thanksgiving, sometimes you just gotta change it up. And that's exactly why you gotta make this white cheddar mac and cheese. I mean, this stuff is bomb. This is like some gourmet stuff. The breadcrumbs and Parmesan on top is honestly a small little extra step that just adds a whole heaping amount of profit in taste. Easily 15 out of 10 right there. I already know these are gonna be amazing because I make these all the time, but let me just tell you, if you don't like Brussels sprouts or you like them and you don't really know how to cook them, this is what you gotta do. Mm. Absolutely spectacular. Brussels sprouts are really dense, like their leaves are really dense. That you don't, you, the, the crispiness you get is a lot different because the layers are so compacted. Um, and that's exactly why I like to just fry these, pan fry them, and don't overcook them at all, or else they're just gonna lose all of that dense crispiness that I love from them. So, so the mushrooms give this really sweet, tender taste, and the Brussels sprouts are a little bit more bitter and crispy. So them together, I mean, you really can't go wrong. Honestly, all three of these are so good in their own right. And of course, there are so many different types of Thanksgiving size that you can make. That's the one thing that I love about Thanksgiving is the variety that it gives you to create whatever you want. So if you don't have an idea of what to make, these are great to start with and can really fill up your menu um, as they kind of all add something different to it. So I highly suggest making all of these. Be sure to subscribe, please subscribe. Like, comment, do all of those things and then just stay tuned because we're about to have some entrees, some desserts, maybe even some appetizers. Your whole Thanksgiving menu will literally be created on my channel if you need it. So just stay tuned and thank you very much for watching. Peace out.